Welcome to Career Explore Northwest Live. Uh, my name is Tina Swanick, and I'm the Career Explore Northwest Educator Producer for KSPS PBS Public Television in Spokane, Washington. Thank you for joining us today. Career Explore Northwest Live is an interactive Zoom event that connects young people with professionals to learn about careers and career paths. And today we'll be learning about lineman careers with the help of a special guest from Avista, Tyler Brink. As I mentioned, Tyler is a lineman for Avista Utilities. Avista is an energy company involved in the production, transmission, and distribution of energy, as well as other energy-related businesses. Avista Utilities, the company's operating division, provides electricity and natural gas to customers across 30,000 square miles in four northwestern states. And Avista subsidiary provides retail electric service in the city and bureau of Juneau, Alaska. The company was founded in 1889. Um, Recently, Avista was recognized for the fifth time by Ethisphere, a global leader in defining and advancing the standards of ethical business practices as one of 20, the 2024 world's most ethical companies. Um, hello, Tyler. Thank you for being here today to share information about your lineman career and career path. Yeah, thanks for having me. And we also have two schools with us today. We have Deer Park High School, and we also have East Valley High School. So thank you to both of those groups. Um, with East Valley High School, we have career counselor, Mike May. And with Deer Park High School, we have their instructor, Matt Walbrom. Thank you for being with us today. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to quickly share the agenda for today's event. Um, first, Tyler is going to tell us a little bit about his daily work as a lineman and his career journey. And then we'll open the floor to questions from our student guests from Deer Park High School and East Valley High School. And we won't be taking any questions through the chat today. We're instead going to be engaging in this live discussion. Okay, so let's get started with our event. And again, welcome, Tyler. Uh, will you please describe for us a little bit about what alignment does and share with us your career path to becoming alignment? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, basically, as alignment, we take care of anything from distribution, transmission, basically anything out of the substation is what we do. So from generation all the way to your doorstep, uh, whether it be high voltage transmission lines or secondary voltages that you guys would see inside your school or house. Um, I'm kind of a newer journeyman. I've only been topped out for two years with Avista, um, but I've been with Avista for coming up on six years now. I started as a groundman, uh, which was about a year process. Got an apprenticeship after that, very luckily. Um, my apprenticeship was three and a half years long. Of course, paid while I was on the job. And then about two years ago, I topped out with Avista. So now I'm a journeyman lineman. Great. Can you explain just real quickly what topped out means? Uh, it, basically the next step for being an apprentice. Um, it means I am a qualified electrical worker to now go up and work on high distribution lines by myself or whether it be with my pole partner, um, another journeyman lineman, and then be able to teach apprentices and groundmen the trade as well. Okay. Thank you. That provides a little bit of clarification. I wasn't familiar with the term myself. So, okay, now we'll start um, the question and answer portion of our event. East Valley, what is your first question for Tyler? Um, Monty, and I was wondering what skills you developed since you became a professional. I guess the skill to teach. Right out of high school, I actually went to East Valley High School. I graduated in 2010, but I was an electrician for four years, um, a residential electrician. And I always knew I had buddies in the trade. Um, that's kind of cool to actually be in the trade now. I kind of took a later step in life, but the ability to teach and learn to teach, anybody can go to work and do their job, but taking that knowledge that you learn on the job and then being able to teach it is probably the biggest skill I've got out of this. Dear Park, what's your first question for Tyler? I'm Jacob, I'm a senior. And my question is, do other skills or attributes give an advantage at getting the job or a higher starting pay, such as uh, knowing how to weld, having a two-year or four-year degree, or knowing uh, or having gone to lineman school? Uh, to make it short and sweet, no. It doesn't hurt, right? I personally didn't go to a lineman school. I was lucky enough to get hired on as a groundman, work my way through that position, uh, make myself noticed, and then get an apprenticeship. I would say about half to three quarters of the people that we run through our apprenticeship have previous line school experience. And don't get me wrong, like previous life experience too really helps. If I were to do it right out of high school, 
I don't know if I necessarily would have made it in the trade just because there's a lot of aspects throughout life that you learn, like age and previous job experiences that really help. But really, out of high school, it doesn't matter who you are. If you come here to work and you work hard, you'll get noticed and your previous experiences don't really matter. East Valley, next question. Hi, my name's Kempton. What new skills have you developed as a professional since taking this role? Probably just to touch back on teaching again. I've been topped out for two years, as I already told you guys, and I teach, uh, I actually teach our apprenticeship school. So if you do get an apprenticeship, whether it be with a Vista or anywhere else in the Pacific Northwest, you go through a school while you're in your apprenticeship. And I'm actually one of the instructors in that school teaching electrical theory, um, basis of transformers and whatnot. It's fun for me too. Um, anybody can take a job, go to work every day, do your thing, come home and leave work at work. But it's cool to be able to do or be in a position where I can teach what I know and keep and basically stay sharp. Dear Park, next question. How difficult is it to get a high paying traveling job? You mean like being a lineman? Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's pretty easy. Um, how would I say this? I guess the utility portion of alignment is completely separate than like a construction lineman. So the benefit of what I have is I have three kids and a wife. I'm able to go to work every day and come home at night and see them every single day. So with that, there are some downsides in pay. Um, if you were to become a construction lineman, an outside hand is what they call it. You are going to travel the world and you're going to make a lot more money doing it, but you're going to give up those sacrifices, right? Of being around your family, seeing your kids every day and so on and so forth. Um, but I would say it is easier to be an outside hand and travel the world and do line work than it is to be a hand at a utility. Um, the older you get, the more or less you find your comforts, right? And you want to be home to your kids, where you grew up, whatever it may be. So the utility side of it is more sought after, I would say, in a way to the older linemen that have already experienced the traveling and had their fun. But it's definitely not a bad way to go. Um, you make more money and you have a lot of fun. I personally have never done that. East Valley. What kind of decisions do you make in your role? Kind of a tough question. I guess on a day-to-day -day basis, depends what we're doing and what job we're working on. Um, there's a hundred different ways to do line work. Uh, shoot, there's more than a hundred different ways. Uh, and that's the problem is working with your crew, whether it be your pole partner, your apprentice, your groundman, whatever it may be, coming up with a solution to the job that you're going to tackle. Because the best part about our job, being a lineman, is that no day or job is truly the same. Yeah, we set poles, we put wire in the air, but it's all situational. So it really just comes down to working with your crew and being able to formulate a game plan before you start your job and then perform on that game plan and not deviate from it. Your park. I'm Aiden. And like what advancements opportunities exist for the career and how do you qualify for them? I would say being alignment is bottom of the barrel, right? Because we start with our groundman apprenticeship and then a topped out journeyman lineman. Um, but within the company, depending on where you are, there's multiple roles to move up, whether you want to be, a general foreman or a foreman that pushes crews, uh, a serviceman, you work by yourself, and you're primarily the guy that takes all the trouble calls, um, whether it be part powers or, you know, squirrels online, trees and lines, whatever it may be. Um, but if that's not for you, you also have the option of moving up over time into management, um, if that's a role you want to take. East Valley, next question. What's one of, like, your biggest challenges in your role? I'd say probably personalities. Uh, this trade you are working with a crew and that crew is like your second family and being able to mind and mesh with all those people on the crew is i wouldn't say it's difficult um but it's definitely something you got to do you can't go to work and be standoffish or not communicate well um and i'll be completely honest with you there are times when you're working with guys you don't necessarily want to be working with or like right but that comes with anything in life but being able to mesh and work well together might be one of them your park, next question. My name is Jesus. I'm a junior. Um, what kind of tasks are prioritized as alignment, such as having storms or there being floods, um, et cetera? So our day-to-day -day work would fall under, well, there's a lot of different things we do to maintain our infrastructure, right? It's not just taking a phone call or sitting down in the morning and going to fix down power lines or whatever it may be. Uh, Avista and a lot of other utilities, they focus on their infrastructure and maintain a solid infrastructure so everybody can keep their power. Um, so I'd say first and foremost, that is our day-to-day -day task, right? Maintaining our grid, maintaining our infrastructure. 
But when a storm arrives or there is an outage, um, I would say that does trump everything. And we have specific people within the company to take those calls and work those storms. Any outage, no matter the size, is a VISTA's priority. I can't speak for anybody else, but that's the general game plan, right? You lose power, one of us is gonna take a call, go figure out what happened and go fix it. And that is, I would say, the number one priority aside of just the standard day-to-day -day grid hardening and maintaining of the infrastructure. East Valley, next question. Do you have a mentor? If so, how have they helped you in your career? I wouldn't say I necessarily have a mentor. Part of my job as a lineman, a journeyman lineman, is to mentor all of our apprenticeship or all of our apprentices and groundmen that come up through the trade. Um, I knew that this is what I wanted to do at a younger age. It just took me a while to get here, and I worked some some pretty terrible jobs before I actually did make it here, um, which makes me more thankful for what I have. But as far as having a mentor. There are people that kind of take you under their wing. Um, you find a good group of guys to work with and they'll teach you things beyond the day-to-day -day stuff, which is nice. Makes your job a lot easier, but you kind of pick and choose your mentor. You, I mean, you guys, I assume you guys are smart and you know what you want to do and you can tell the difference between people that enjoy their job every day, come to work and love teaching and the ones that don't, because we all know there are those two different types of people. Um, you just kind of got to take it upon yourself too to select your mentor find out where you want to be and where you want to go. Deer Park, next question. I'm Christopher and I'm a sophomore. Um, what is your process or what was your process for getting hired as a groundman, getting trained and then moving up into lineman work and just apprenticeship stuff? Yeah, so <clears throat> I got hired on as a groundman. Um, I think there was a pool of about 100 applicants that tried out for this position. And when I say groundman, I mean, you're basically just starting at the bottom tier to work your way up through an apprenticeship. Um, you're the guy with the shovel. You're the one digging the ditches, putting the conduit in the ground for your underground wire um, with an end goal, right? You're not, your goal to get, or I, sh I should say it this way, your goal is not to be hired on as a permanent groundman, it's to become a lineman. So it's a stepping stone. Um, I was fortunate enough to get hired on with the Vista and work my way up. But once I got my groundman time done, which was a year, you have the ability to apply for an apprenticeship. Uh, lucky enough, I got the apprenticeship first go around. Um, the apprenticeship starts, well, it's a seven step process, which turns out to be three and a half years, 7,000 hours. They calculate it both ways. So there's really no way of finishing early or getting your time done early. Um, once you complete your apprenticeship, your seven step program, which they rotate you through the different yards in a Vistas territory, you then have the ability to have your hours signed off and then take your test through your local union to become a journeyman lineman with that previous knowledge that you've learned on the job for the past three and a half years. East Valley, next question. What has surprised you the most about your position in your industry? There's so many different ways to do one thing. Um, just because you're taught one way to do things and you may be taught that way over and over and over again, you'll work with somebody else who let's say comes up in a different utility or a different company and does the exact opposite of the way you've been taught, but completes the job safely. It, you really just never stop learning in this trade, which is kind of cool. I guess I should say it this way too. You can, and there are people out there that don't continue to learn and better themselves, but it is the cool part about this job that you have the option to keep learning. Even as a topped out journeyman, you never quit learning. Dear Park. My question is, is being a storm chaser a specific department in a VISTA? No. Uh, from the utility side of VISTA, there's no specific storm chasing. We have, I want to say we have 13 different docks within the utility um, that covers our region. Um, and each dock does their own section, I guess. Like I'm a Spokane lineman. I deal with Spokane and surrounding areas. I'll occasionally I'll take a storm call and go up as far as Colville or as far south as Grangeville. Um, but primarily I'm in a specific dock. If that's what you want to do and you want to be a storm chaser, I would say it's a specific type of lineman. Yes, but you're not going to find that within a utility. You're going to go sign your local union books and then you're going to take a phone call. Say a storm hits east, far east, they're going to call you from that local union and then you're going to dr drive or fly over to wherever that calls from and start working. And there are a lot of people that live their life that way. East Valley, next question. So I heard you saying like construction linemen. Is there different types of linemen and uh, how much do they usually get paid? 
Uh, yeah, there is different types of linemen. So I'm a utility lineman, uh, as you guys know. So I work a lot of primarily, primarily what a distribution utility lineman works on is, I wouldn't say your lower voltages, but the lines you see around your areas it range anywhere from 7,000 volts to 14,000 volts. And those are the lines that go through your substations at a lower voltage to then be taken through a transformer and provide power to you. You have transmission linemen, you have, I mean, you have multiple different kinds of linemen, but Avista is primarily distribution and some transmission. And as far as pay goes, I'm a utility lineman, like I said. Um, our wages are decided by our local union, and you guys could probably find that information out online. But you do have the ability to make a lot more money as a construction hand doing whatever it may be. You might work transmission, you might work distribution, you might spend most of your time in a substation rebuilding bus work. Um, it really just depends. Dear Park. Uh, I'm Connor. Did you have any professional experiences unrelated to this industry that allowed you to excel in your current position? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we deal with a lot of younger guys right out of high school that want to be linemen, which is absolutely awesome. Um, 18, 19 years old, getting hired on as a groundman. And you can kind of see the look of shock in their eye. Not to say you guys would be like that. Um, but having those previous job experiences, uh, I was a residential electrician for some time, worked in excavation, did some trucking. Um, I worked some pretty terrible jobs. I was even a dishwasher for my very first job. But having that previous experience and then getting on at a Vista, making very good money, um, really gave me some insight as to how hard I need to work to get where I want to be. Because jobs like this, they're not for everybody, yes, but we, we definitely have it good as far as pay goes, but we have to work really hard in order to get that pay, right? So having those terrible jobs ahead of time really made me appreciate what I have now. East Valley. How long is your work day and work week? I could make it as short as I want, right? Working my standard 40 hours a week, seven to three thirties, our schedule Monday through Friday. Um, but as a lineman, I have the ability to answer the phone whenever I want. So like I said earlier, if there's an outage reported, uh, goes through our system operators, which then call linemen to go patrol or figure out what the outage, what the cause of the outage is. Um, so my workday can end at 3.30, right, and start at 7, but I can take a phone call virtually any night of the week or any day during the weekend and work really as much as I want. Kind of depends. Um, there are some guys that have thousands of hours of overtime at the end of the year, and there are some that have a couple hundred. So it's up to you. Your park, next question. Hi, uh, I'm Cordell. Uh, what new skills have you developed as a professional since taking this role? I wouldn't say they're necessarily new skills. Uh, like I said earlier, there's hundreds, thousands of ways to do one necessary way. Um, and I just continue to keep learning those multiple ways to do things. Yeah, just being open-minded, continuing to learn is really all I can say. But that's an option you guys have, either to be closed-minded or open-minded. I think this job's a lot more fun going to work every day and wanting to learn new ways to do things. East Valley. What do you think is the best way to earn a job in this industry? Work hard. Huh. Just like anything, right? Um, yeah, to sum it up, work hard. I mean, you can go anywhere. You don't necessarily have to go with the Vista, right? There's perks of being an outside hand, outside lineman construction, and working here. Um, but really, all you guys have for, your, for yourself in life, which if you haven't figured it out now, you will later, is your name, right? All you have is your name and what's attached to you. People, are, people will know you before you even get to a dock or before you go work across the east, right? If that's what you want to do, your name's attached with you wherever you go. So it's, for you guys, it's up to you guys, but work hard and make a good name for yourself and that'll get you far. Dear Park, next question. What does health insurance look like and what are some dangerous parts of the job that you have to tackle with? So as far as my health insurance with Avista, um, Avista is a great company to work for. I can't speak just for the line side, right? It's a, an entire company, um, but they take care of us here very well. And as far as on the outside goes, um, there's a company called LineCo that provides your health insurance at virtually no cost to you if you do decide to go outside and work construction. Um, along with the pay and along with the health insurance and benefits, it's a good career path, really good career path. And if you're smart with your money at a young age, you can earn yourself a really healthy retirement. And then what was the second part of your question? What are like everyday dangerous tasks that things they have to deal with? Live voltage, right? High voltage. I I wouldn't say necessarily that high voltage is the most dangerous thing we deal with. Um, it can range anywhere from high voltage being 7,000 plus volts to lower voltage like you guys see in your house. 
voltage doesn't necessarily matter of how dangerous it can be, right? Um, just keeping your head on a swivel and staying cut in 24 seven is probably the most important part. Your park. Is there anything you'd recommend kids to do or any jobs you'd recommend them to do before they went into the lineman career? Not necessarily. If this is a career path you know you want, I'd say go for it. If you're hundred percent sure that being a lineman's for you, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't take no for an answer. I'd start there and work your way up to get where you want to be. Yeah, previous job experience will help you, not more or less in the work that we do, but just make you appreciate what you have. But like I said, if this is something you want to do, I would chase it and chase it hard. East Valley. How physical can your job get? Uh, it's definitely a physical, very physical trade. Um, not the best on your body, I will say. Uh, but if you stay in shape and take care of yourself, you can maintain. I wouldn't say this is a job you can do until retirement, right? You might want to look for a different option at that point, working your way up into a foreman position or a serviceman position, because um, it is strenuous on your body, right? Working the storms, the cold nights, freezing temperatures, and even the heat, right? Getting old, it, uh, it definitely would be a little bit more difficult, but as long as you maintain yourself and take care of yourself, I think it's a position you can do for a good portion of your life. Your park. Uh, my name is Nathan. Uh, if I get on as a groundman, uh, what's the steps or the procedure to kind of climb up the ladder in the company? So from getting hired on as a groundman um, with Avista, it's about a year, a year process. And throughout that year, you'll have monthly evaluations, not from one specific person. Um, you will be bounced around through multiple yards. And by yards, I mean the different docks within a Vista service territory. And throughout that year time, <clears throat> excuse me, those reports, the, you don't, you basically just don't get a report. And as long as you do good, it's pushed back to the side, right? Those reports are your reputation throughout your groundman time. And for when applying for that apprenticeship, whoever the hiring managers are going to be or the people on the interview panel, they will review those previous reports and determine how well you did through your grandma time you know, that'll help you get your apprenticeship and then throughout your apprenticeship it's the same thing you deal with reports every three to six months depending on how you're doing and you keep getting good reports you'll have the ability to take that test and pop out in the end but it is the process um aside from learning and knowing the trade personalities are huge uh, being able to get along with your coworkers and your mentors throughout your entire process um, Speaking personally, I don't want to teach somebody that comes to work and treats it as a job. It's kind of relaxed. Doesn't seem like they care too much. You know what I mean? I want to teach the guy that comes to work excited to know the trade and know the job. And that's going to want me, or that's going to make me want to teach them more, if that makes sense. And that does go noticed. East Valley. What was the pathway you took out of high school to get to your position today? That was kind of a whirlwind, right? I didn't do it right out of high school. I think I started my apprenticeship at actually my groundman time. I would have been 26. Um, but right out of high school, I had some very good friends that went to lineman school right out of high school. Um, got an apprenticeship through Mountain State, which is a company based out of Montana. Um, and just talking with them through the years while I was doing what I was doing, them making great money, traveling the world, having a good time. It's always something I wanted to do, and that's why I got my CDL right out of high school, um, because I knew to be a lineman, I had to have a CDL, right, if you guys didn't know that. Um, but life happens, right? You have kids, you get comfortable. Um, it just took me a lot longer to get where I wanted to be. I don't regret it by any means, because I had that previous job experience, but right out of high school, I knew that's what I wanted to do. It just took me, well, it took me a lot longer than I wish it would have to get where I am now. Dear Park. I have a question on transport and tools. Do you get loaned tools and transportation or do you use your truck and your tools? So with Avista, I can't speak personally outside. Um, with Avista, my tools are completely provided for. And once I get to work, so I'll drive my personal pickup to work, to and from work. But while I'm at work, it's an Avista owned company vehicle um, that we use for transport. Whether it be our crew trucks, which are like our F-550 trucks, uh, all the way to our line trucks and bucket trucks. It's all provided. Uh, Construction is kind of the same thing. They'll provide you with your transportation on the job. But as far as tooling goes, that's all on you. Um, so that's another huge benefit of going to a utility, right? Because I don't know if you guys know much about tools or line tools in general, is they are insanely expensive. 
Um, and we are extremely spoiled here. So having that ability to have the best tools is huge. And it maintains your body a lot better too, right? You're not using hand tools compared to battery tools, which we get to use. East Valley. What are some requirements you need to like get into a Vista? Work ethic. Uh, um, right out of high school, the best thing you can do is to go to line school, I would say, if that's a career path you know you want to do. During line school, you will get your CDL, which is mandatory, of course, because we drive bigger trucks. Um, but you don't have to. I didn't. Like I said earlier, just go get your CDL um, and then start applying. Whether it be at a Vista or anywhere else, you can apply for groundman spots through all your local unions. So it doesn't have to be here in Spokane or anywhere around here. You can go sign local union books to be a groundman. And it'll be the same process, right? Once you get that groundman spot through your union or utility, it's just working your way up through the process and earning that apprenticeship. Dear Park, next question. So when you get called to storm and you go sign the books, say across the country, when you come back and you really like your career that you were on, if you sign the books here, how hard is it to, for you to get back on the same career? Is it really just a random chance? It's completely a random chance. So that's, um, that's a huge part of the reason why I stay and why I'm still here right now, right? Because storm chasing, it's fun. It's very lucrative. But taking the chance of leaving for three months to a year, whatever it may be, and then coming back and getting a job back on a Vista um, or a local utility in this area, because I want to stay where I live, right? Um, it's pretty slim. The chances are not very good. So I take that pay cut, right? And stay here locally. Um, but it's worth it to me because it's where, it's where I want to be. East Valley. How many people are usually in your crew? Uh, depends normally on the day, but there's normally your line foreman, uh, you have two journeymen on the crew, an apprentice, and an operator with a Vista. Um, depending on where you go, you won't get an operator. Um, but those guys are our backhoe drivers. They dig all of our pole holes, dig our trenches, um, bring us material to backfill around the poles. And then occasionally we'll get a groundman on a crew. Um, most groundman positions within a Vista are put on our conduit crews or our underground crews. So you won't see a lot of overhead time working on poles, but you will be doing a lot of our distribution system. Um, underground because as you know majority of our system will be transform transforming um to underground it's kind of the way way of the future right it's a lot safer more reliable dear park next question is having your cdl a requirement for being a lineman yes 100 percent. yeah i i don't know the weight to be completely honest with you but uh we drive commercial vehicles i think it's anything above twenty six thousand pounds don't quote me on that but yeah, you have to have your Class A CDL <clears throat> to drive a lot of the vehicles that we do. East Valley. So you said you need a CDL. Do you have to go to alignment school for that, or can you get that outside of that? You can get it outside. Um, I went through a local school here in Spokane quite some time ago. Um, but the benefit to line school is that they will provide you with uh, a section off time for a class for your CDL, and you will get your CDL through that line school. Um, but no, it's not a requirement. You can go to any truck driving school wherever you're from and get your CDL. How much is it for the line school? I honestly don't know, man. Um, I think it all depends on where you go. Uh, I know it can range anywhere from, well, it's a lot more expensive now, right? I think it can range anywhere from like 9,000 all the way up to $20,000. So it, it gets pretty expensive, but the benefit of that is you do part of that tuition fee is your CDL and it is your tools. So you'll get outfitted with your climbing gear, uh, your belt, your gaffs, and all your hand tools to go along with that. Your park. What made you want to start working for Avista? As far as me living in Spokane, the Pacific Northwest in general, um, I got all my family here, and Avista is the name, the biggest name for power in this area. Uh, knowing that I wanted to be a lineman and still live in Spokane, well, just north of Spokane, uh, my options were limited, right? We got a couple local utilities in the area, uh, whether it be Avista, Inland Power, Modern, Vera, so there's a few, right? Or Kootenai if you're in Idaho. Um, but Avista is the largest and the biggest, and that's that's where I went for, and I got lucky enough to get it on my first try. East Valley. How would you compare your job to the same job in other companies? Like, is Avista better? I'm biased, right, because I work for Avista. I think it's a great company to work for, um, but I can't really speak on that. I, I did my apprenticeship time here, and I topped out here. Um, I can't talk bad about any other utility. Uh, I think being a lineman is the coolest job in the world, and I'm sure it's just as good anywhere else you go, right? Your park. Where do you have to live in order to 
work for Avista or a company of a similar line of work because I know that my dad works uh, fairly far away, but it's just within the distance threshold of his work. So would I have to move from Deer Park or Clayton or somewhere else to work at Avista? You know, that's a good question. So um, being Avista is a big company, we have multiple docks or sites throughout our service territory. Uh, me being a lineman personally, I can live within 25 miles or 30 minutes, um, whichever comes first, right, of my work location, which I work in Spokane. So our headquarters is located right off a of mission. Um, and I have to be within 25 miles of my doorstep or 30 minutes drive time. And they do that for the sole reason is being a lineman, we take a lot of trouble calls. Customers always come first when it comes to that. So we want to get the power back onto our customers in a timely manner. And that's why they require that certain length. You can work away from your, your local yard. But as far as Avista goes, if you work in Deer Park and you live in Clayton, you're totally fine, right? So it's just kind of finding that threshold of where you can live compared to where you want to work. I think we have time for maybe two more questions. So East Valley, what's your next question? Uh, what kind of tools do you have that are like specific to the line of trade? There's a lot. Um, as far as our hand tools go that we carry on our belts when we're climbing a pole, um, it's pretty simple, right? We carry like some clients, some pliers, screwdriver, a knife to skin wire, pretty simple stuff, a hammer. Um, but there's hundreds and hundreds of tools that make our jobs easier. Um, Milwaukee's kind of leading the way on all that stuff right now for our battery powered tools, but we have cutters that'll cut through wire the size of your wrist. Um, I mean, imagine doing that by hand, it kind of sucks, right? There's, there's a ton of different tools out there for our trade specific. Um, you just kind of got to start doing the research on it. And being that it is line work, um, the tools are all very expensive. So back to being a perk on working for a Vista or a local utility because they provide, <clears throat> excuse me, all those tools for you. Deer Park. Do working at certain docks pay more in different areas? Uh, no, it does not. So I work through Local 77, work for Avista, but I'm under Local 77's contract and they determine our wages. Um, it's all negotiated through the different utilities in the area. Um, but so I, I can work in Deer Park, Spokane, wherever it may be as a lineman and all those wages are the same, um, but I still have the option to move up, right? Uh, if I don't want to be a lineman forever, I want to be a serviceman, let's say, or a foreman. Um, with those increased responsibilities, you get an increased wage, right? But as far as working between the different docks within the company, the wages are the same for a lineman position. Thank you so much. I think we are at the end of today's event. I'd like to ask Tyler, is there anything else you'd like to share with our student guests about lineman careers that you think is important that we didn't cover during the Q&A session? Um, yeah, specifically for any of you guys that are interested in this career path, um, Avista does offer some pretty cool student opportunities. Um, I'm not sure if it's dependent on school, to be completely honest. I didn't do much research on it, but we have a lot of guys in their junior, senior years of high school that'll come and do ride-alongs with the line crews. Um, because it's cool to, you know, think you want to be a lineman and you think you have a pretty good idea of the trade, but until you actually get out here and experience it, it may not be something you want to do. So I encourage you guys to get a hold of your teachers or faculty that can somehow collaborate that with Avista, but we do offer ride-alongs for high school students and it's a pretty cool experience for you guys. What a great opportunity. Uh, thank you again so much, Tyler, for all of this information and for the time you've shared with us today um, and for um, sharing with the students so much valuable, important and interesting information about lineman careers. I think it's um, probably fair to say that we all learned quite a bit today. Um, we had great questions from our two schools, so thank you so much. Um, so thank you to Matt Walblum and the students from Deer Park High School today, and also Mike May and the students from East Valley High School for joining us for this event. And I hope that you found this session very interesting and informative, and that especially what you learned today might help you to make the decision whether or not a lineman career is the right fit for you. And that concludes this Career Explorer Northwest Live event.